Today's Stillmace Warrior partner is Set for Set. We want to take the time to thank them for the offer that we provided during this episode and for teaming up with the podcast to provide a better listening experience for you. You can find out more about Set for Set at stillmacewarrior.com or by visiting their official website at setforset.com. All right, guys, what's up? Victoria from stillmacewarrior.com here. And today we have someone special to me because um, before, you know, before I got into Steel Maze, obviously there was, um, there was on it, but um, I also went on YouTube and uh, I found Coach Vaughn, right? Is it, did I say that right? I, I always have, yeah. All right. Uh, I found Coach Vaughn and um, he was teaching like some awesome videos on Steel Maze. So we have Coach Vaughn with us today. Um, I'm so excited. And we're going to just talk about Steel Mace, as always. Are you excited? Oh, yes. Yeah, I know some listeners were just waiting for this one. All right, cool. So let's talk a little bit about your story um, before you got to the Steel Mace and then kind of like what led you to the Steel Mace. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm from Palmdale, California, about, about like an hour north uh, from L.A. A uh, bit of a desert town, a lot of aviation, you know, all that type of stuff out here. But yeah. Uh, yeah, a lot of my, 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 my connection with fitness obviously started with football, playing football my whole life. Then, you know, tried to get into firefighting after high school, uh, did all that academy stuff, you know, for almost 10 years. It just didn't work out. And uh, personal training was always a plan B for me, and it just really worked out um, because it, I could work my scheduling around going around fire academy stuff. But, uh, yeah, then I got more into functional training – you know, with TRX, and then, you know, started taking a lot of education courses. I've traveled all around the United States, um, one time to Greece for a summit, you know, so I oh. love traveling, love learning mm -hmm. from other people that have uh, always shown me cool new tools, but not just tools, the philosophy, you know, how to use them all, and you can, you know, apply them to any tool, so, uh, yeah, so my story with the mace, I originally, um, Dr. Mark Chang, I don't know if you're familiar with him. Um, mm -mm. Uh, great instructor, you know, applies a lot. He fuses a lot of uh, our Western, he's a, with, you know, Asian type, you know, methodologies and all that, you know. And uh, he's very big in FMS, you know. Uh, he's a strong first team leader. Uh, uh, he has a DVD called Prehab Rehab. Uh, I highly recommend that. Um, you know, he always talks about how movement is a lot like money. You know, you can max out your credit card, but sooner or later you're going to pay the bill. But if you got a bigger bank account, right? You can you know you can do more. But uh, yeah, he's the one that introduced me to it as one of as one of his courses he did uh, with uh, Chris Frankel. Uh, he's a uh, the, the lead uh, the lead instructor for TRX, and then um, yeah, showed me the steel mace in Seattle. And then I, I, I got addicted to it right away. It was, I couldn't believe it. So my first mace was a seven pound. I tried doing a 360 with it and I couldn't. I'm like, how is a guy <laughs> my size cannot do a damn 360 with a seven pound weight and I can press a 48 kilo kettlebell. It's like, there you go. there's something up with that. So, and I did have a shoulder injury uh, about three years prior to that, separating it at a stupid pickup game I had with friends just got tackled hit the ground and yeah shoulders that's that, that was another reason i got into function training taught me a lot about you know my body how it reacts to injury and all that stuff but um yeah uh ordered the mace as soon as i got home and then i just started experimenting with it at my gym and just fell in love with it it just kept growing and up till now uh you know i didn't see a lot of videos on it i i tried you know beyond Dr. Mark Chang, who showed me it, you know, I didn't really know anyone else that showed it. You know, of course, I saw some videos of Isik from on it, you know, but there was no real educational content. Right. I, mean, I took the on it foundations course, I think like two, three years ago. Great course, uh, you know, did learn a little bit more about the steel mace. And that's when I was like, you know, I should put a video out. And I mainly put out that first video. Um, with the mace uh, for my clients because wow. they just liked seeing my videos as a reference point. So when they bought it and they, you know, wanted to work out outside, they just had that as a reference to go to, but it, 
I wasn't expecting that video to like what reach now over like 60,000 views now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's how, that's how I learned about you. It was through your videos. So that's, that's a cool fact. Yeah. Um, sure. yeah, yeah, I was never intending my, my videos to be, you know, popular, but they, you know, they turned out, uh, people loved them. So I kept getting feedback and I was like, okay, I guess I'll put up more. And then yeah. Yeah, the more I kept playing around with the mace, you know, the more I kept like coming up with like, God, this is like gold. Because my kettlebell training felt great. I mean, I personally love kettlebells, but there's so much tension involved with tensing the right muscles that you got to relax again. And that's what I feel like the steel mace did help me flow into different movement patterns that my joints were used to. And it felt like it brought a lot of balance to my training pretty much. Right. For a big guy who needs like yoga, you know, I feel like steel mace is a good me medium for that, you know. And it's funny that you mentioned that you're a big guy because I, I think that's one thing that attracted me to your video. I know this is going to sound weird, but you were this big guy swinging a steel mace and I was used to like seeing like more, you know, skinnier guys. So yeah. it's interesting to see someone and I knew you did kettlebells. So that's interesting, which I kind of want to get into that if that's okay with you. Um, mm -hmm. I was reading through your ebook which by the way, I recommend completely for listeners. Um, it's really awesome. I loved it. And I loved how, I don't know if you want to talk about that, but how uh, you kind of mix the kettlebell with the steel maze. Like it's like a little synergy going on there. Um, for someone who hasn't read your ebook, um, can you talk a little bit about that? Like how they kind of complement one another? Yeah. Uh, so the new ebook is called Gotta Swing. Um, it's a steel maze and kettlebell. Uh, uh, strength program and I love these tools together because I feel like they complement one another you know just like like just down to the basics with the 360 with the steel maze you know after teaching a lot of people you can't really t you know show someone who has really bad posture throughout their life you know they have a desk job they drive all day I'm um, being from California the average person out here commutes at least over two hours to their job that's so true. That's a lot of sitting. That's a lot of bad posture. So I trained those type of people. And for me to tell them to do a 360, it wasn't possible. Wow. So I had to show them with the kettlebell, for example, just to do a halo with it. Hey, just keep your shoulders down and back. Keep your, uh, your hips stable. And that's something Dr. Mark Chang must refers again. And I also refer in the book is that what he calls the four knots, you know, your shoulders and hips. If your shoelaces are too tight, you can't move your foot. If your laces are too loose, your shoe's going to come off. So we got to find that right mobility and stability. And that's what's great about this one-two punch with the kettlebell and steel mace. When you're swinging a mace, your shoulders are mobile, your hips have to be stable. You don't want to be kipping with your hips. But when you're swinging a kettlebell, your shoulders have to be stable, hips are not mobile. So we're really working those four knots uh, in a great way. But not only that, in a 3D plane, uh, I think kettlebells are great for more frontal plane movements more explosive you know broad jump you know like tackling type movements and then the steel mace works great for more like striking type and more lateral type movements so you get all these planes of motion best suited for it and that's why i like featuring in this program uh to combine them both so you're like wow these two work really together because when i first got into kettlebell training i would always do heavy swings all the time i'd go heavy 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 and I have to relax again. I'd always feel like my mid back was so tight and I had to do kill up a halos in between sets. I was like, man, I wish I had something to loosen up my mid back. Right. It was crazy. That next couple of months, I took that course with Dr. Mark Chang. And I was like, this might be the tool that's missing in my programming. And it's really improved uh, not just my life, but other people's lives, you know, just in my community and then other people I've been showing on YouTube and how it can really benefit you and get you, you know, not just, you know, you know, looking sexy for Instagram and all that, but just, you know, feeling better, you know, I, I, you know, just having people wanting to, you know, get better lives, not feel as down. And then, you know, a lot of them are parents and they just want to keep up with their kids. Right. And I, I think that for some reason, every time we talk about the steel mace on a podcast episode, it always comes back to the steel mace kind of being used in a therapeutic type of way for posture and stuff like that which is it, it's interesting to see it always come back to that. And I think that in your, in your uh, story or your, your journey, I, I like the fact that, I mean, you went to, um, to his doctor, right? He's our doctor. What, what, what did you say his name was? Yeah. You went back to him and he's like, Hey, we use this tool, you know, 
and then you got introduced. I guess it was kind of from a therapeutic standpoint, right? At that point. Yes. Yeah. yeah so uh, that's, that's really interesting. I don't know if you want to go into that a little more. Um, I mean, yeah. Cause I mean, me personally, I'm a, anyone who's watched my videos, I'm a bit of a, a metal head. Uh, I'm like diehard <laughs> about that. Uh, so yeah, anyone who knows what the whole Viking theme, I'm very, I'm a huge Amon Marth fan. If you don't know, it's a Viking metal band. I made a whole crazy, everyone seen, has seen me with the, uh, I think with the Thor workout I did. Uh, yeah, I did that. This is a fun project. You know, I, I also probably drank too much caffeine for too much for, yeah, but it was just so many ideas I had. So it was a therapeutic in a way that I almost got to connect my love for heavy metal and, you know, biking and like, you know, just mesh everything together. I feel like it's very therapeutic in that way. And that's the cool thing about the steel mace. And I, I did watch Rick Brown's podcast and everything. It's like, no one owns the mace. Right. You know, I loved you said that. It's like, it's your own expression to wherever you want to connect it to. So me, I'm a metalhead, you know, someone going through something else, you know, they, they, they can, you know, connect it in that type of way. And that's what I love about it. You know, uh, there's nothing more I love doing than flowing with a mace and then blasting one of my favorite heavy metal albums in my gym. And I feel like a thousand times better. <laughs> That's, that's really cool. Yeah. Like, uh, I think of the total opposite of you. I'm over here like spiritual and very um, and I think that's my connection with the mace. So it's kind of cool to hear someone say, yeah, it's all about metal with my mace, you know, that's awesome. Yeah. And, um, well, yeah. And I was going to ask you about that too, about your gym and like, uh, the Viking theme and everything. So you kind of hit that. That's interesting. And then I do know, I didn't notice that you had like, uh, like Viking symbols Are those Viking symbols, like on the mace. Uh, yeah. So that, one, the one I've used a lot of that Thor maze, that's the uh, Triquetra uh, symbol. It's three, uh, you know, it's three inner triangles all connecting. That's and then really cool. My, my, my symbol I kind of came up with uh, that I've painted in the background that I've seen in my videos. Uh, originally, it was a strong first logo, and I kind of wanted to just get my own uh, branding going. Um, and what... The, uh, there's an Odin symbol. Uh, Odin is the Norse god of war, and that's uh, Thor's father. So he's, you know, so he's like the main god of Valhalla, you know. And that's why I have that's why I have an Odin kettlebell in the corner as my main centerpiece with a Thor hammer underneath it. So it kind of all blends in. But the, back to that symbol, uh, Odin's symbol is actually it's, if you flip it around, he has three triangles. And when I saw, I flipped it around and unconnected and saw three Vs. Ah. So Viking, Valhalla, and Vaughn. I was like, huh. I'm like, that, that sounds pretty cool. <laughs> I showed my girlfriend, showed my dad. My dad's been awesome uh, with the gym. For everyone asking that, I probably got that question a billion times. Where'd you get that cool steel mace rack? I'm like, you got to have a fucking awesome dad to <laughs> – <laughs> to build you this yeah he's all thinking i'm crazy like i always thought you'd ask me to build a dumbbell rack but a mace rack you... <laughs> he doesn't know what any of this stuff is and you're like he's like very foreign to it but yeah i'll do just all these designs for him and then i'll ask him if he can make it and he knows how to make it my dad is an english teacher uh a professor english professor at our local college here but he's amazing with uh crafting wood anything out of wood He's made. I, my, I grew up with a, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, four brothers, two sisters, so big household. Big household. So my dad built all of our beds and even our dinner table. Wow. Himself. So <laughs> I got to kind of take his skills into my gym. And yeah, that's good. That's awesome. I wish. Yeah, I wish I could have someone that could make me stuff. God. Yeah, I'm, lucky, I'm lucky to yeah get his. Uh, yeah, the, the half the reason the gym looks so cool is because of him. So half the gym is made out of wood and concrete. So everything else is steel, of course. Yeah, <laughs> right. So, okay. So you got, you know, you got the, the mace in your hands, uh, you know, for the first time. Tell me what your experience was like with the steel mace for the first time. Uh, and then kind of go into like maybe some of your like favorite moves or, you know, some that you can recommend to beginners from there. Yeah, so I was, I, as I talked about uh, earlier, it's like, yeah, my first mace was seven pounds at a course. And I was just like, how? The, and I felt like I was like 
trying to dance around it like I was so stiff. And I was like, man, like this has to be having to something to do with this shoulder injury and then, you know, just me being too tight. I've always been mobile. I've always worked on mobility, but like that found a weakness right away. When I find a weakness, I want to work on it constantly in my gym, almost like a lab. And yeah, so when I ordered the maces, um, uh, I remember I got a, I got seven myself and I got a 15 and I was like, I can't believe how heavy a 15 one feels. It felt like crazy amount of weight. And then I would do some, you know, tire striking with it. I thought it was a much better modality with it than doing it with the tire, doing it with the sledgehammer, uh, you know, just cause it's smoother. Uh, you know, I like how it feels like a barbell, uh, bar, you know, and then it just, everything just feels more smoother with it. And then after doing like side lunges with it, you know, that ballistic curl, that, uh, you know, at the Academy, that's what they taught me that, you know, that easy curl, it's great for your elbows, great for the shoulders. And then you can build, add three sixties. That's the only thing I love about the mace. You can do three sixties with or without any movement. And that's what a lot, what I do in my videos. I want, I want to show people, Hey, you can do this without the three sixty, and then you can try it with the three sixty. And that's why I try to showcase a lot of my videos. But you know, I love probably my favorite move with the mace is probably the side lunge. Uh, variations you can do with it because it's like perfect to get that line with the mace with your extending leg it opens up the hips it gets you you know just, and then coming back up and then going into a 360 and transitioning to the other side I, I think it's perfect I, it's probably one of the, I do those almost every day just to loosen up in between workouts and yeah so yeah yeah, and then I, I think you mentioned that you had a shoulder injury. Like, how did how did the steel mace work with that? Like, I know that a lot of people maybe with a shoulder injury might say, "Oh, well, the steel mace might make it worse." Mm -hmm. Do you think that you know it might have helped with um, anything with the shoulder related? Yeah, uh, it's more, you know, uh, a great quote I heard from uh, Dr. Perry Nicholson of Stop Chasing Pain. He said, "What do all injuries have in common?" you don't move the same after you literally have this, like this mental block, like, Oh, I can't get hurt again. So this is where like having a coach really comes in handy with steel mace. They have to break you out of these, like, like uh, I don't, cause the last time I did this, I got injured, you know? So that's people get into that mode. So showing people like simple movements, how to use their lats. Uh, the lats are the big wings of your back. I don't think people talk about those enough with mace training. So that's what retracts your shoulders back. People are so used to being here mm -hmm. in a slouch position that I have to literally pry their shoulders back open. And then after all the shoulder pain pretty much goes away just from that point, just simply telling them, Hey, just pull this back. Cause that's where half this impingement comes from. And that's where a lot of my impingement was coming from uh, when I had a shoulder injury because it was getting so bad. My left side of my body was actually feeling like it was shutting down. Like I actually oh, wow. like it was going like the nerves, with this side of the body was actually shooting down my foot. Whoa. Yeah. It was getting pretty serious. So like I had to like really think about, you know, how to restore my body and taking it easy with the mace. You know, uh, I, I'm glad I took my time with it. Just doing three sixties every day. Well, like when I could do it with the seven pound and then I did it a 10 pound and then the 15 felt just the right amount of perfect weight for me. So, um, but yeah, uh, like I said, this, if you get stronger lats, I'm guaranteeing you, I think uh, your shoulder pain will really go away because everyone is always – my best thing I love uh, when I train most of my students at my gym, the first thing they say, I know, and this is how I know I'm doing my job right, when I'm walking around doing stuff at home or I'm at work, the first thing I think about is, oh, my posture feels so much better. Mm. So I, I, I broke that mental block. I let them know that, you know, that's, they just, they've just been here them too, too long and we've got to keep these shoulders down back. So you don't got to think about it so much to the point where, you know, you got to look like, a, <laughs> uh, you know, I try to give people certain things, you know, certain cues, like, you know, think about, you know, how a dog, you know, they bring, they kill the, they kill the you know, a bird and they bring it to you. They got a proud dog chest and they're right. Yeah. So they're kind of like, Hey, proud dog chest. And then like, so, stuff like that <laughs> yeah. okay all right cool then that's a that's a cool fact for the listeners um so you you mentioned right now and I'm, I'm i'm throwing some some random questions out there but you mentioned that you you know you started with the with the seven and then moved out to the 10 and then finally to the 15 
for someone just beginning and they want to jump to like a heavier weight, um, what's like the sign that they're ready for that heavier weight? You know, like. Um, um, usually it's, it's, if you can do, um, like say like you could do like a good, like, if you can do like five sets of 10 easily with the mace with three sixties, I say you're ready for uh, like to go up and then you can just go lower reps with it. Do like three to five, three sixties with a heavier one. Cause you don't want it. Cause sooner or later your, your, your tendons are going to burn out. That's another thing people got to realize it's not so much your muscles and your, you know, the, the posture so much. It is, it is about that, but your tendons uh, now when it comes to heavier maces, your elbows, all these tendons right here, they're not going to be used to that. So you're also going to make sure you're still balancing it out that your, your, your joints are ready for that. But, um, yeah, like me, I've gone up to now like a 40 pound, uh, steel mace. Oh uh, yeah. Doing it for almost three years now. And that one is starting to feel light just cause I'm, I, it's all about consistency. I guess that's where I'm trying to get out. If, as long as you're consistent, with the mace, the, the weight's just going to fly up because my girlfriend, she can do, you know, maybe 20, 25 pounds, you know, when she does a 360. And so, you know, as long as you're practicing, you know, um, you'll, you, you should go up and wait. But that shouldn't be the focus. It's more like what can you do most with a 10 pound? And like me, if I had to pick one mace, uh, like uh, I keep referring all these authors, uh, Dan John, is another one. He has what's called the Goldilocks effect. You want that. You got ones too light, too heavy. You want to find that one that's just right. So for me, if I had to pick one, I'd pick the 15 pound mace because I could do everything with that. I can go in different planes of motion. I can do one arm 360s. So it's like not so much focusing going up heavier. Try to think what you can do more with with the 15 pound or for women. Uh, like I said, women, I'd say maybe 10 pound mace. Guys, a 15 pound mace. And yeah. once you're actually feeling comfortable in different planes of movement, you know, with squats, lunges, presses, then you can maybe go to a heavier mace. And I'm glad you mentioned that because I think a lot of people getting into the mace, they're used to, let's go up and wait. Let's go up and wait, right? Coming from a gym or, you know, working with barbells or whatever, you know, it's always about let's, you know, let's hit that PR or whatever. So with mace, it's, you know, it's a little different. So I'm glad that you mentioned that because that I think that is very common when people are moving into this like new tool, like, you know, so. That's what people do with kettlebells as well. They think heavy, heavy, heavy injury. It's almost a victim of habit type thing. They think they got to go heavy, heavy, and then all of a sudden injury, you have to restart all over again. So it's like, you got to break that pattern, be yeah. more consistent, be more humble with a weight you can work with longer rather than just jumping forward with a giant weight that you know that's likely going to injure you over time right yeah yeah because i i mean i guess someone could possibly right someone i mean that's something i always ask every every coach that comes on here you know um you know uh, well mr maceman said you know the whole time like 30 years of teaching or whatever the number was he was like I've never seen one person leave my workshop like injured with it but someone who probably is starting at home they could possibly get injured if they're you know if they don't have a coach or if they're trying to use it like uh, like something at the gym or something yeah exactly yes. like these are getting very pop I'm seeing the same thing I saw with kettlebells like 10 years ago not a lot of people knew what a kettlebell was. Now they're everywhere. <laughs> right. I mean, I mean, every single big business has them in the commercials now. Um, lost my mind with the last Super Bowl commercial and they swung it overhead. Uh, that's another story. <laughs> um, um, if, you, if you ever meet a strong first instructor, don't ever swing a kettlebell overhead. That's just a tip. There you go. Right here, yeah. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, I'm seeing the same thing happen with the mace it's really starting to grow that same like i really do think by like in the next couple of years i think it's going to be the next big thing um and what has been the, like um my sales uh in the goddess swing ebook it's, what's been interesting it's sold in seven different countries mm. and i was like it's because of these there's no other there's no other education for it that's why i've been asking these people like like how'd you hear about it like well i don't have any instructor 
in my entire country that knows what to do with the, ma the mace. Like I saw like, cause I see where they, they purchase and then they're like, this person's from Hungary. This person's from Budapest. I'm like, wow. So that's, that's like super interesting. It's, it's all over the world now. Everyone's like really trying to find out what the mace is all about. So yeah, uh, I'm pretty excited for it, you know, and I'm seeing uh, a, a lot of people who've never used it, they get really excited for it. Like, they're just like, wow, like, why, why has no one ever shown me this before? I feel like that's what everyone has in common is like, what the hell is this? Like, what, mm -hmm. where's this been all my life, you know? So, yeah, yeah. I know that, you know, that's one thing that I've talked to a couple of people on there. I guess when they pick it up, they feel like warriors. They feel like once they're done with it, they're like, this makes me feel fucking strong. Like this makes me feel like primal almost, you know? Um, I don't know. What, what's your experience like with people who first pick up the still mace? Like what, like your, your clients and stuff? Uh, like what's their reaction usually? Some are excited. Some are intimidated. Obviously everyone thinks they're walking into a freaking, uh, you know, torture dungeon when they see my gym. <laughs> everyone's like, what the hell is all this? Because everything you see in my gym is like very unconventional and we don't really carry, you know, the typical, you know, corporate gym stuff. So, but anyway, yeah. Um, yeah. Most people's experiences is just, they're, they're like, they can't believe though. It's funny with women. Women are very humble with it. I always say women are so much easier to train. Guys are just too hard. <laughs> That's Boys the second funny. time I hear that. Are you sure this 15 mountain base? It's like, that, 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 that's going to be enough. I'm like, just wait. I'm like, and of course they get put in their place really quick with it. And then women, you know, I just give them a 10 pound mace and they flow with it very easily. That seems to be the go-to one every time, you know, with them and they take it in much and they love it because it's very flow like. And it almost reminds them of yoga. You know, um, I'm not saying women only do yoga. I'm just saying, I think everyone should do yoga. I've done it before. That's why I feel like you should keep your mobility, but it's like, that's what I think people, it's like you're combining yoga, strength training and this, yeah, warrior esque, you know, primal sensation all in one with it. And, you know, everyone kind of connects to it differently. But yeah, I love just getting people stronger with it. You know, I've used people with all ages. Like I got a woman who's in her 70s. And, you know, we're not doing 360s with it, but we're, we're just doing simple curls with it. We're just doing press outs with it because she has a lot of shoulder issues. She has a rounded back. So we just do a lot of press outs and, does great with it. You know, I even got one client, he, uh, has, he suffered from a stroke and he has completely no like movement when we first started on his, with his hands, but now we can actually get some external rotation in his elbow, uh, from what his physical therapist had told me. And he's done really great with it. So we, we actually use, we, for a shorter lever, we actually use a club just for him to press out and pull it in with his other hand. Wow. Stuff like that. So that's that's some that's new that's new on the podcast that's awesome i gotta yeah. give you a high five virtual high five for that one yeah. <laughs> wow that's crazy so we got like all walks of path like you know like everyone like using the steel maze that's so cool yeah, um I mean, i'd love to say i train you know navy seals and all that but like i love training you know everyday people and, yeah. right yeah, bring them to the warrior side. That's awesome. Um, or in your case, the Viking side. Um, so, okay. So through your ebook, I also read a, a small section uh, talking about like kind of training without your shoes. Mm -hmm. And then I also noticed that you're really big on just, you know, mobility too. So maybe we can go a little bit into, into those two things. Um, yeah. So, so like what's up with the, with the no shoes? Um. A lot of, like I said, people that walk into my gym, you know, they're, they're in shoes all day. Their, their feet are very cramped. And uh, as I talked about, you know, in Asian culture, um, they view that's uh, where the, your feet, that's your source of your health. So the way your feet are, that represents your entire health. So if your feet are super cramped, they're expecting that to be going all the way from the, uh, all the way up to your head. That that's what you're, that's what you're like. And um, so and there's a lot of nerves in that sole of the foot, like hundreds of thousands of nerves that connect to every organ, muscle, and they're blinded by this thick shoe pad. And I, I don't know how in Western culture, you know, we thought, you know, a little slice of, 
you know, padding would change the way we, you know, we move when really, I mean, we're talking primal and everything. It's like everyone moves without shoes. I mean, when you think about, you know, MMA fighters, they're producing this enormous amounts of force and power of striking and they're always barefoot. Right. Even in boxing, their shoes are super thin, you know, so that they don't want to blind the nerves too much. So, uh, just gr grabbing from the ground up, driving your feet into the ground, I think it's very crucial knowing how to externally rotate your feet. You know, like I would say, corkscrew your feet into the ground. If you spread the floor like in a squat, you're going to feel much more glute engagement when you're barefoot. When you have this tilt, because most shoes make your feet go like this. So right. it might, feet are like this, my pelvis is going to do this. My pelvis is doing this. Now my back is doing this. Uh, now we're getting this, a lot of, you know, tension in the low back. That's how a lot of people get, you know, not a great, not a great movement patterns because they're so tight uh, with, uh, and that's a lot of what my clients love doing is they love kicking off their shoes as soon as they get to my place. And so, like I said, as I recommended my uh, client, Carlos, the one who has the stroke, we do a lot of barefoot just to get his foot, the sole of his, you know, everything to just drive down his, his feet. I make him, you know, flex his foot against the foam roller as he pushes against a wall. So he gets extension in his foot, he gets flexion in his foot, stuff like that. It, it, it if you want to think of it as like a giant neural hose line and you can kink that hose, especially in the ankle. So th th that's, a, it's a lot, right? I can go into a whole thing with that because a lot of instructors have taught me how the feet work. Um, but I want to refer a book to know more about that. Um, yeah. it's called born to run. And this guy goes on a journey, uh, learning from this tribe called the Terahumara tribe. It's a Mexican culture that's behind all these drug cartels. So that's what they, they're not even heard of. The guy like risked his life to like get to know these people in these mountains and they're known as a running tribe and they wow. only run with basically slivers of like what looks like shoot, like rubber tire on their as for sandals and they can run hundreds and hundreds of miles no problem wow and that's how actually and that's how chia seeds got real popular because they drank it all the time out there for more endurance wow so, yeah they're, they're, I'm, I'm gonna have to put that on the blog post the one i provide with this podcast because people need to know about that book that sounds so interesting yeah Wow. Uh, read a lot of books so that's what i love doing um you know to keep myself educated um uh, yeah there's so many more i can go into like i said i got an example for each one because I, I get like i said i get people from all walks of life so i want to be prepared to give them a referral resource you know uh i got i get a lot of runners a lot of mud runners those types so stuff like that can be valuable for them yeah that's so awesome um so so in other words yeah you know, that would benefit steel mace, right? With no shoes or, and I think you said chucks, right? Chucks are good. Is yeah. that what you said? Yeah. I wear, I mainly wear uh, chucks in my videos. If people have noticed, yeah, just for that reason, I don't want to seeing my feet all the time. <laughs> yeah. I'm mainly training barefoot all the time and I do a lot with the mace as well. Um, like I said, cause when you're doing that 360, um, if say if you're doing a 360, as we talked about that elevated heel, goes back that's a big reason why you're doing people do this rib flare right here when they do a 360 you want to think about hiding your ribs down and keeping a neutral spine and just letting your shoulders do most of the work just like this is a lot for people to do just just and not to kick their hips back so if they have shoes on that could be a big you know roadblock so i just recommend taking the shoes off and you're going to feel a much bigger difference in your mace training um and then any other modality as well. That's I'm very big on that. Um, like I said, uh, like I said, I get, cause I did shoes. I, I was that type of guy that wore the, the insoles. And I always wondered why I had so much plantar fasciitis going on. I always thought, you know, I just need to stretch out my feet more. I just need to do more calf stretches. And then after I got into uh, strong first, the kettlebell certification uh, teaching, you know, that just take off your shoes when you do kettlebell training that changed a lot. Like I got stronger instantly in a lot of different lifts. That's awesome. So that's cool to know 
guys, uh, for those listening, you get stronger without shoes. Um, and then talking about different modalities, I see using fat bells. I want to know more about fat bells and those benefits between that. I know this is all about stillmates, guys, but I'm going to just have to ask about fat bells because I've seen, I've also seen my coach, Matt Burberry, uh, using them sometimes. And I didn't ask him on that, on that podcast. So let's go into that with you. Okay. Uh, uh, they were invented by Donnie Thompson. Um, he's known as Mr. 3000. He's just, so he's very big in the powerlifting world. He's the first to lift over 3,000 pounds for bench, deadlift, and squats. Wow. It's pretty impressive, right? Wow. Um, so the guy knows what he's talking about. Um, yeah. But yeah, so he uh, had a dream that he was swinging a kettlebell, but his hand was inside the kettlebell. So he drew up some diagrams up and came up with the fat bell. Um, which I think is a really cool idea because I, I, of course, you know, every 19 year old male has done a bunch of, you know, bicep curls with dumbbells. And, you know, as I grew older, I'm like, man, dumbbells are easy. They're static weight, you know, they're easy. Like I said, as we talked about the mace, all the weights up here, what's cool about the fat belt, it's surrounding your wrist. These two points, right? That's your strongest point right there for a dumbbell. But now that you're surrounded by wrist with the weight, so you get more feedback to keep everything neutral here. Because a lot of people, when they press, and this is something big I always see, like they, I cannot tell you how many kettlebell, you know, videos I've seen where people press like this. Yeah. You never should press a kettlebell with, your, with that. Same thing with the mace. You should, even if you're doing an offset press, you should have it like this. Get your forearms vertical, press it overhead. That's a great feedback with, with the fat bell it's going to let you know because you're actually going to see it tilt back and forth. So you're constantly cued. So if you feel your wrist hitting the inner rim, it's letting you know, hey, get neutral. So if you're doing like kettlebell get-ups, you can do get-ups with a fat bell to even uh, substitute that. Um, kettlebells are still great because the kettlebell actually just sits right here and makes you go like, wants me to go, so you got to keep it here. So that's great. But then if you want a different feel, it goes all around the wrist. And – well, I like it. it's not a kettlebell replacement. It's more so of a dumbbell replacement. It's like a hybrid of a kettlebell and a dumbbell. So you can do uh, dumbbell-like movements like it, and it feels way heavier. Like uh, I got the whole set. I, I slowly built up my collection. I had a 35-pound set, and it felt like 50, 60 pounds when I first got it. Wow. I was like, these are 35 pounds? And then, like I was trying to do, you know, reg I, I just worked on regular presses, sea salt presses with them, windmills couple of get up variations and what I realized is um, you shouldn't swing them like kettlebells because they don't have that same range of motion. Cause since your hand is inside of it, you're not, you're likely going to clock yourself in the crotch. If you swing it in between. Your <laughs> so, yeah. So just swing it outside of your body. Like you're going to do a broad jump. You actually get more range of motion in that in your hip hinge. And I put out a couple more videos uh, for beginner, intermediate and advanced. Uh, to show you, you know, different levels you can use them for. You know, you can still do kettlebells with certain movements, but like I said, there's certain things about the, the fat bell that is really interesting. So I want to recommend them if, yeah, if you're into kettle, like if you've got more experience, like, you know, dumbbells have been and done that, kettlebells are kind of been and done that, you know, you're pretty experienced with them. I, then I would recommend the fat belt so you get a little bit, you know, different feel because it, it exposed a lot of weaknesses for me. Once again, like anything that exposes a weakness for me, I, I want to get it. Right. And then no, so what no, makes it weight related too? <laughs> like, right. Right. Weight distribution. It's not how heavy the weight is. It's where the weight is placed. Yeah. I was just going to say that too. So what makes this kind of unconventional is that the hands like literally inside of it. Right. Because I, I mean, I look at it and it's, it's even weight if you have both of them on each side, yeah. right? But at the same time, what makes it the fat bell is that your hand's inside, mm -hmm. right? Cause it, that's, it's the whole, it's making, it's kind of like forcing you to keep your wrist kind of straightened up, right? Yeah. yeah. Got it. Yeah, so yeah, like I said, when it comes to pressing, people all the time to get here, like I said, just get that form. You can get much more strength out of that. Like you saw me punching someone like this. <laughs> uh, no. Same thing plays, you want, you want to, have that neutral wrist to get that full amount of power going all the way through it. 
Right on, man. Yeah, I just, I've been wanting to talk to someone about fat belts, and I thought you'd be perfect for it because you, you've done some videos with it. Um, so going back to like for com complete beginner, someone who's just like getting into steel mace, what kind of advice can you give them when they're just getting into uh, like steel mace training? And um, you did mention one of your favorite movements, like maybe what's a good, be like the best beginner movements or exercises that oh. you'd recommend as a coach. So what, and then this is in my programming with the God of Swing ebook. I did this for a reason. I made three different levels, 12 workouts for each one. So I made, a, I made a beginner, intermediate, and advanced. And in the first couple of weeks of the beginner program, there's no 360s. So I, I want you to know, I want you to get to know the mace beyond that. I want you to know how it works. And I've, I've found the ballistic curl variation, you know, the dynamic curl, just getting to know that smooth. So you're not death gripping. People like to death grip the living hell of that when they do a 360 and I have a picture that everyone makes fun <laughs> of the picture and you're going like this like if you're saying this this is not a confident position we want to get the shoulders down and back so I got to relax your grip more with that curl variation it, it, that's the essence of the flow of it we're also teaching your flow we're teaching you up to death grip the shoulders are getting down and back so that curl right there is perfect and it's always great for your obliques because when you shift it to the other side your body wants to tilt so this oblique to the other side has to tighten up so you're constantly shifting left right so that's great lateral stability there and then uh this, there's two pressing variations i love is the press out where you just go here and so then you're getting to know that the stack position that everyone knows with the mace i personally like doing both sides with 360s but i get that question also as well do which side do you do you have to do either side either way when you do 10 and 2 so the 10 and 2 is where you just do it there's no 12 o'clock position anymore but anyway uh the second one uh the pressing uh, is the offset press where the bar's right here in your front rack position and the mace is on this side and you have to press it overhead fully with your elbows and then pull it back down with your lats. So that way you're actually getting your lats stronger in that way and you're actually prepping them for when you can do a 360. Because a lot of people don't, need, don't know how to you know, stabilize and mobilize as we talked about with the four knots thing. You gotta find the right stability and mobility in the right places. So we got to know those spots first before you go into like 360s with the mace. And that's the biggest thing I've seen with, you know, that make the big difference in your mace training is just staying humble with it. Don't, you know, rush into it too fast. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I think that's something that I always mention to other coaches on the podcast. I'm like, do you recommend that someone starts with the 360? Is it safe? And especially if a coach isn't around, obviously you don't want to start with the 360. If you have someone experienced and, you know, you know, you have an athletic background, possibly. But like I said, majority of people nowadays, technology is only getting more advanced. People are sitting more than ever. The typical person sits between seven to eight hours a day and checks their phone up to 200 times per day. That is pretty staggering. And we're expecting someone to switch into warrior mode with a mace in the first week. No, it's not. It's just not going to happen. As we talked about, that's just you running up your credit score on your credit card. That if you want to build a checking account, go slow. You're going to build it up first. That's what you want to do. That's how you want to view your movement. Just view it like money. Just don't don't throw it all on the credit card. First. <laughs> You're going to pay for it in the end. So, um, yeah. Um, pretty much everyone I've seen, yeah, use the mace. They just yeah, they need at least three to four weeks. I would say to get a good solid 360. I could force them to do a 360, but you could just tell that there's a certain way it moves. The, the mace should just look like it's smooth. It shouldn't look ratchety like they're trying to death grip it in there. Because I've had people like I had one worker. She uh, she manages a whole a Pollo Loco star uh, store, and wow. she fell on her side. She messed up her shoulder. She messed up her wrist. She couldn't even fully grip and it took her three about three weeks uh she didn't think she could do a 360 with a seven pound we got her to do a uh a, yeah 360 just within that time frame just because we learned those movements with the with the curl all, all the videos i mean if you see my youtube videos for anyone who's not familiar with them i i go all into those i i go with steel mace workouts and i have another playlist set for steel mace education where i'm a little bit more in depth with one movement so you get a little more in depth with them so you get to know them more and so you can build up you know your repertoire with the mace right 
360. And that, and that's what I like about your videos. Cause like you said, um, when you go on the Onnit website, they don't, you know, they're not like talking and speaking into the camera and giving you like the in-depth look into it. So that's some, something that I recommend to the listeners for sure. Go check out his videos. Um, are there any resources that you'd recommend? I know you already mentioned a bunch, maybe you can repeat some so listeners can hear it again. And then, um, maybe some specifically for still mace, obviously yours, your ebook, where can they find it? Okay. Yeah. Um, so my resources, you know, uh, as I talked about, Dr. Mark Chang's Prehab Rehab, um, you know, if you have very serious issues, I recommend that. You know, if you had an injury, you know, it's pretty much a great program he's put together. It's in DVD. I think you can even download it now. Um, I mentioned a book called um, Born to Run that goes into, you know, how bar barefoot training works. Um, and then there's not a lot of like I said, there's not a lot of, a whole lot of content, you know, I've seen, you know, um, Rick Brown put out stuff, you know, that's a good resource. I know, um, Leo is very, he's very unconventional, but everyone loves his stuff. You know, uh, re you know I recommend him, you know, um, uh, I had a, I had one client take his workshop, I believe last week he came over here to Los Angeles. She loved it. So, um, and then, uh, yeah, my ebook, I just came out with that. I need to get more on workshops myself. I, I'm trying to promote that a little bit more. I do everything myself at my gym and my website, so I'm trying to get that more together. But um, yeah, uh, my website is coachvon.net. And I came out with the ebook, um, you know, to get people more, you know, educated on the mace with the kettlebell, because those seem to be, I think, I think they're a perfect one two punch, you know, just having maybe two maces and just, you know, two, three kettlebells you can get a hell of a program out of that. And like I said, I don't, I, the ebook section is all breaking down, you know, get ups, swings, how to hack into the 360. And I go into detail on how to correct them with hyperlinked videos. They're all very detailed videos. Uh, it works over a year on it. So it's, I just didn't, you know, put this all together. It took a lot of hard work and yeah, I'm very proud of it. Um, uh, it, yeah, like I said, and then you get a whole workout section. So you get it's a progressive strength program. The, just because don't I always say never confuse simple with easy. And you'll still find the beginner, the intermediate, and the advanced stuff um very challenging. Um so I'll I'll you get built up nicely into the program so you're not getting thrown like, what the heck is this? You actually get built up for better complexes and all that stuff. So I put yeah, all the down, and then every and then every one of those exercises, those are hyperlinked as well. So there's over like 130 videos. Yeah, yeah, I have the ebook and I recommend it to everyone. It's like amazing. It's really good. I'm not finished with it yet, but um, I loved it. I loved what I did read, and I mean, obviously, I was like, I gotta get this guy on the podcast because he needs to get out there now. Why don't you have an Instagram? I'm gonna have to ask you because I'm an yeah, Instagrammer. <laughs> Okay, so, um, <laughs> okay, so me being a metalhead, I, I, I just hate anything that's trendy. I'm going to be very honest. Um, I tried, I think, two years ago to make one. I thought it was stupid because I just kept getting, you know, a bunch of spammers and a bunch of stupid. I, it, just, it just seemed like it was wasted focus. I, I put a lot of focus into my work, and I want... I'd rather put out one solid YouTube video a week than a bunch of, you know, four or five small Instagram videos. Uh, and then another fun fact about me, I didn't get my, I didn't get a smartphone until about a year and a half ago. So I had a crappy old phone that basically could only take calls and text messages. It had no internet. Wow. And people look at me like, I'm like, how did, how did you survive? It's like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, but anyway, just, uh, I may start an Instagram again. I, I, I'm sorry for anyone. I started it a second time. I tried doing it. I, I just wasn't, as, I feel like I was losing focus on other programs and, you know, I may come out with it again. I may just have, I've, I've talked with my girlfriend, like, Hey, can you just manage it for me or something? But she's busy exactly. with her own thing right now. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, uh, I may bring it back. Just, I, I just, I'm very, I don't know. Just, I, I feel like it's, I know it's, I know too many people that if you took their Instagram away, like if their account got deleted, they would act like their life was over, which I find, Freak absolutely, out. Which I find absolutely pathetic. It's just, 
you know, I'm not trying to talk shit about anyone. I'm not talking about anyone. Just, I, I know some people from, you know, different parts of my life that took it way too seriously. Yeah, and people, yeah. people do act like it's their lives. I, I don't get it. You know, it's just like, I'm, I'm never understand. I see why people do it. I realize it's a good venue for people to get more mace content, but yeah. I like presenting my content in a more professional as possible. I want it to be less than three to five minutes. If you can't give me three to five minutes of your time, I don't want your viewership. It's, it's kind of, that's just the way I am with my videos. And I don't think you can learn a lot about the mace in less than one, in a one minute uh, Instagram video. And then not only that, the, the average person looks at an Instagram video no longer than 15 to 20 seconds. No, yeah. Well, yeah, because it's, I think uh, an Instagram video is like a minute. Yeah, and most people say the longest. Yeah, and then I don't have fake boobs. <laughs> I don't have all these fake things about me. So. We, can, we can put fake boobs on you. Okay, so where can people find you? Like if, if they wanted to find you, what social media platform are you using? We know YouTube, and I think you have Facebook, right? Facebook? Yeah, okay. So I got, I got my website, coachbond.net. I'll, I'll, I post more stuff on there. If you okay. want to get more in tune with that. I try to mesh everything together with my YouTube with that. Um, and then... Yeah, my YouTube channel is Coach Vaughn, and then I have Viking Valhalla Training Center on my Facebook page as well. I post uh, tips on there as well as much as I can with Steel Mace. Um, I am going to be coming out with a program to follow up. Uh, I'm, I'm doing a program on Indian clubs and steel clubs. Next. Oh, that's so cool. So um, I like what Rick, Rick Brown said. Uh, he said the, the, the club is like a short mace, you know, so – I got into those almost about the same time as Mace's and I've kind of really liked them. I'm putting more content together for those as well. And yeah, so people get, you know, a different feel. Cause I know some people, a lot of my clients, they love the Mace kind of love uh, clubs, I have people that really love clubs and they kind of love the Mace. So it's a little bit, you know, uh, I know some people that don't even have Mace's on from what they've told me on YouTube and they only do clubs. So there seems to be, I want to bridge the gap. For, right. for that a little bit more because I think there are those are also a great tool as well yeah so that'd be interesting because I've been wanting to get into clubs so you let me know when you release that because that'd be awesome uh, wow. hopefully very soon yeah just doing a lot of experimenting in the gym my grip is killing me <laughs> from all the <laughs> demo I've been doing but yeah all these demo videos I put together just so everyone knows yeah. I get a workout every time I film so it's, yeah yeah. No, and, I, and I'm sure we all appreciate it. Thank you so much. So, all right, we're going to end this podcast. Um, thank you so much for, for sharing your knowledge here. And I'm sure a lot of people are going to freaking, they're just going to love this uh, this episode. And make sure you comment. Like, I haven't had a lot of people commenting on, on the actual blog. So go ahead and comment and kind of review the, the podcast if you want. Um, and yeah, so anyways, um, make sure that uh, you check out the blog post for this because I'm going to add all the resources um, that he just mentioned. And again, thank you so much. And may the universe always flow with you. Thank you. I had a great time doing this. My first podcast. So. All right on. Right on. <laughs> You're, you just got your cell phone last year and now you got your first podcast. Yay. All right. <laughs> all righty. Cool.